Hey guys, when I first started drawing with Procreate and the iPad, the feel of the Apple Pencil wasn't quite perfect out of the box. To fix this, I spent hours fiddling with individual brush settings, but little did I know the real key to getting the most out of your Apple Pencil is to look at another setting that exists globally above the individual brushes called the pressure curve. The pressure curve is located in settings, preferences, pressure and smoothing. If you just want to see what curve I use, here it is. Feel free to copy, but if you want to dive into how this works and how to tweak the curve to your liking, keep watching. So when I was figuring all this out, I did some Googling and I found a really good post on the Procreate forums by a user named Azart that has some really good examples that kind of explain what the pressure curve is about. So let's go through them together and I'll briefly try to break them down. So this is the thread and I'll link it in the description below so you guys can check it out. But if you scroll down, um, here is the post from Azart and these are the examples. So I just zoom in we've got here. So the first example he's got is called low pressure, more persistent. And what you can see is a ramp. It looks like a roller coaster. You know, it starts out slowly and then it gets faster and faster and faster as it goes up. And the idea here is that in the lower values or when you're pressing lighter, you'll get a lot more control and you know, you'll be able to sketch around a lot and not have too much problems in terms of uh, really dark darks coming through. So that's why you've got a really gradual curve at the beginning. It means you have more control in the lighter values. But then as you start to press harder, it immediately starts to get really, really dark, really fast. The next curve that they have here is called heavy pressure, more persistent. And this is kind of the opposite of the previous curve. So in the zones where you have less force, you're immediately ramping up really fast and it'll get dark really quickly. I won't go through every example, but you can check out the link in the description below and find out more. Instead, let's jump into a breakdown of the pressure curve. This graph has an X and a Y axis. The X axis represents what I call the hardware axis. This is the hardware pressure or force detected from the Apple Pencil. This data is fed into the iPad and Procreate. The Y axis represents what I like to call the software axis. This is the software pressure applied by Procreate. If I move a note here, it means that maximum pressure will be reached with only 50% of force applied. If I move a node there, it means that only 50% of pressure will be reached with 100% of force applied. Reading the axes as percentages of pressure applied and force detected really helped me understand the pressure curve and will enable you to create your own pressure curve. So now that you understand the basics, let's jump in and create our own curve. So what I want to do is add a node here. Uh, this is in the lower areas and I want to drag this node down here just to give myself more control. So I'm going to move that here, which means at about 30% of hardware pressure, I only want about 20% of pressure applied in Procreate. Okay, so having that node in place is good, but it's starting to look like the first curve from Azart's examples, which was that ramp where you have a lot of pressure being applied really fast in the darker values. Uh, so I want to slow that down a bit and have it taper off. So I'm going to add a node here and then pull it up here to taper it off. And essentially that's creating the S curve, which is in Azart's third example. Um, but I do like to tweak this a little bit more by moving this node up to here. And because I want to make this curve a bit more neater, so I'm going to anchor it there and then pull this out. Um, and basically what that means is that I'll hit maximum pressure when I've only hit 75% force on my Apple Pencil. Okay, so now that I've moved that curve, you can notice down here it's kind of um, automatically shifted some stuff here. So I want to fix that up because I want to be able to access those lower values. Um, so I'm going to move that up here, taper that a bit more. And generally speaking, I like my curve sort of like this. It's a bit different, but this is the curve that I like. And it means I get lots of control in the lower areas because I brought it down. And then also in the upper areas, I get more control and less, I don't need to use as much force. Another way to think about this that might help you guys is if you imagine a straight diagonal through here, which is the default, basically what you're saying is if you put nodes below that default line, it means more control 
for that area. And then if you put it above that line, it means less control or I mean, I wouldn't say less control, but it means um, more pressure, more darkness. Um, it gives it a bit more strength, right? Okay, so that's the basics of the pressure curve. I think if you really spend the time to work this out and dial it into the way you like to draw and the way you like to press on paper, it can really open up this software and transform your drawing experience. Um, and yeah, once you've done this, you can go into the individual brushes and start tweaking them there. You know, there's a lot more features and customization, things like tapering and flow and opacity. And it's really exciting once you get your head around it and you start tailoring brushes that are completely unique to you. In a future video, I'll go into a couple of my own custom brushes and why I've created them and why I use them, just to help you get an understanding of what types of brushes you might want to create for yourself. So that's it for this week and this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.